Good morning. So I was going over my um, healing prayers, and so I was reading those, and then after my healing prayers, I've been venturing into these verses um, over peace, okay? And so then I got to uh, the last one on here um, before I venture into verses that deal with resting with the Lord. So I'm in peace verses, right? And this verse is Psalms 119, 165. And it says, Those who love your instruction have great peace and do not stumble. Now here is what came to me as I was reading this. So those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. So if we're looking at love in this sense, right? So <clears throat> love, those who love your instructions, those who respect, honor, and obey uh, instructions, how we are called to live, be, act, peace. Because we have the understanding and we're walking on a solid foundation, solid ground, right? So no matter what storms we face, we won't, okay? And then we have great peace and do not. So we won't stumble. So to stumble, to think twice, doubt, fear, worry. So when something comes about, we stress out, freak out, try to, you know, whatever. So because we are rooted by his word, in his word, we are walking and living in peace with no fear, worry, or doubt. where no fear, worry, or doubt can make us flinch, okay? So considering the fact that if those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble, so those who love, honor, and obey your teachings, how you're calling us to live, be and act, uh, we are at peace, so no matter what storms we're walking through, we are not phased. It's pretty much it. It's that simple. It's that simple, yet it's that it's a little, I mean, how do you, you get there, right? It's not an overnight process as we're learning with everything. Uh, it has to do with, you know, taking the time to read his word. And through his word, we start to plant that seed of understanding what he's saying, right? So our peace verses, John 14, 1, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. So that's what Jesus said. So... Why do we let our hearts be troubled? And then he says, those who love your instructions, right? How do we get to know those instructions? Well, we read our Bible and we read what God is telling us to do. I mean, he didn't create this Bible just to be like, read it and be miserable. It's like, no, like you have to deal with a lot of things in life. Like what I'm trying to tell you is going to help you. And so I don't understand why we don't consider God's word more. I, I don't understand. But what I do understand is that, I mean, these verses, they are here, they're alive, they're living, they're today, they're, they pertain to everything we've gone through, go through, and will go through yet. Um, so it's important so that when we face those trials, we have these stored up in our minds and hearts and souls so that whenever we face anything, we can be like, nah, you know, God says this, God says that. So, um, we're still in peace verses here, right? So Exodus thirty three fourteen, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. So I've been learning a lot about what rest really means because we know that there's a physical rest, right? But do we also know that there's a mental and emotional and a time to just sit in the presence of the Lord and like calm down and not be so overwhelmed by the things that are coming at us. Um, even if they are our fault, um, what I've been going through the last couple of months, a lot of it has been my fault and a lot of it has been my way of thinking and what I've been speaking over my life. And so really understanding that I have not had any rest because I have been, I have to do this, I have to figure this out, I have to find another job, I have to, you know, all these things coming at me instead of, I trust that the Lord 
is in control. And we can get those, those verses, but when they're stored up in our hearts and our minds and our souls, so when those things come, we're like, again, right? Okay, Psalms 37, 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. That has to do with a lot, right? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. What are we patiently waiting for? Is it a new job? Is it a future spouse? Is it healing? Is it food because we don't have any money? I mean, whatever it is, we can rest in the Lord and know like God's promises state that he will provide for us. Like that's in his promises to provide. So if you need something, you know, like, what does it say? Um, you know, pretty much to sum it up, like, Look at how much he loves the birds of the sky, the sparrows, the one eye. He takes care of them, the flowers of the earth. And how much more do you mean to him? So you don't think he's going to take care of you? Um, man, it's just... I love this. Psalms 116.7 Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. Just so many good verses and things so I've been speaking the healing I did just post um this initial uh healing prayer uh the just the basic of it um I did do a little video on on TikTok mm -hmm. I hate that I can only do three minutes you guys know how much I like to talk so obviously uh three minutes is very limiting to me anyways so there's a whole nother portion in here talks about you know we believe and we speak that healing but then how do we keep it so it says each one of us must understand how to receive healing and keep it when we understand god's word on healing and act upon it it brings forth a manifestation of healing in our physical bodies our goal is to receive the manifestation of healing and give our Heavenly Father the glory of what Jesus has done for us. So if we break this down, right? When we understand God's word on healing. So how do we understand God's word? We read it, right? We read it every day. We understand. We He says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask and I'll give it to you. Okay, right? That is uh, James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So if you don't have wisdom, right, so you're reading and you don't have wisdom about something and you're asking, like, can you better explain this to me? And he will. Or wisdom over the right job or wisdom over the right person or situation. Okay, but how do we how do we get that understanding? Well, we get that understanding by reading our word. So we're reading our word and we're reading it every day. We're asking the Lord for wisdom to better understand his word. And, and then we're acting upon it, right? So not only are we doing what God is calling us to do, right? Because he specifically tells us, hey, you know, take care of your body. Do these things. Um, he doesn't, you know, I mean, I think the biggest thing people get so worked up about is, you know, when God tells you don't have sex before marriage. Well, okay. You know, I get it. We live in the world we live in. But at the same time, like, are we really missing out by listening to what God is telling us to do to properly take care of our bodies? So we're not letting our hearts be in a situation where they can be broken. We're not our, allowing our bodies to be used and abused. We're not setting ourselves up for any sort of uh, things that can come about from this premarital sex. We're just, you know, guarding our hearts and, and pretty much protecting our bodies from people using and abusing us from sex anyways. Or... Um, what do you get? STDs, you can get uh, sickness, you can get the stress of a sickness or stress of relationship. Um, I mean, there's always going to be some sort of stress in a relationship, but then you turn to the Lord, whatever. Okay. But, you know, telling us to take care of our bodies, he's not like, hey, don't do this because like, I, I don't really love you guys and you just don't understand. So just don't worry about it. Just do as I say. No, it's like, hey, like, I'm trying to warn you, like, you can prevent a lot of crap if you just listen to what I'm trying to tell you. And so, you know, I mean, he tells us how to take care of our bodies, to respect it, to honor it. And why not? Like, why wouldn't we want to respect and honor our bodies? You know, take care of it. And then you're not 
sitting over here going, okay, now how do I get back to healing? Because if I would have just listened to what he told me in the beginning, I wouldn't be suffering with these digestive issues. And I rebuke the digestive issues. I'm speaking healing. I'm claiming it. I'm believing it. I'm receiving it. Um, but, you know, instead of going back and doing damage control, read his word. Learn what he says about you, what he says to do. Act on it. And it brings forth a manifestation of healing in our physical bodies. Our goal is to receive the manifestation of healing and give our Heavenly Father the glory for what Jesus has done. So there's sin in this world, right? So when Adam and Eve, the fall of mankind, uh, you know, Jesus came to, um, as he came as the second Adam, right? To restore what was lost what was stolen what was taken from us so with what jesus has done not only did he so when he died on that cross like that is when you ask him into your heart right you receive that salvation right you receive it you believe it your life changes and everything is just oh my gosh like i can't believe it now i have this relationship with the lord and the way that my life is going i never would have known he saved me from you know whatever addictions and chains broken and bondages and family, whatever. And I fill in the blanks, right? So through that, also considering that he says that healing, right? Uh, Psalms 103.3. Let me find my, I have it because I've been speaking it every day, but I want to get it properly spoken so the father forgives all of your sins and heals all your diseases so when jesus died on that cross he forgave all of your sins and heals all of your sickness and disease so you know there's sickness right there's sickness i mean if you've heard any stories about anything in the bible i mean people being healed for things but also like the diseases of you know people consider alcoholism a disease or Addiction to drugs, a disease, or STDs, a disease, or um, some weird disease that they tell you you can't be healed from. But God says no. Like, why are you believing other than what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that healing literally comes alongside with that salvation. So if you've asked Jesus into your heart... You've asked him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins. Um, you believe that he died on the cross, rose again to give you new life, and, and that you want to make him your your king, your lord, your savior, your best friend, your everything. You invite him into your, your life, and you want to start living for him, and you surrender your life in, in, in that moment. Right? Okay? So then consider this, right? John 3.16. Basic verse. You want to know, okay, so consider this step for a second, right? Does God love you? You, right? Who are you? Who am I? John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, so... For God so loved the world, you are in the world, right? You are a person. People live in the world. That he gave his only son. He sent his spirit into flesh. And Jesus died on that cross. A very brutal death, right? Brutal. And when he died on that cross, his blood was shed. And through his blood being shed on that cross... We had the opportunity to receive salvation because he went down and he stole the keys to death, right? So we don't have to go to hell. We don't have to go to hell if we invite him into our lives. He, he did it for those, you know, who love him. And, 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 you know, that's the whole point of free will. If you choose not to invite him into your heart, you don't want to live for him, hey, that's up to you. That's totally up to you. You have the opportunity. Uh, he loves you. I mean, he sent his son to die on the cross for you. You are not exempt. That is fine but to consider that you 
with salvation is, is the healing. When Jesus died on that cross, he took every sin, every sickness, every disease, every addiction, every pain, every hurt. And it says the devil inflicts us with sickness, not God. Okay. Acts 10 38. Okay. So sickness is the result of an oppression of the devil, right? Acts 10 38. Jesus says, and Acts 10 says, Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Okay, so when people ask, why is there sickness? Why is there disease? Why is there pain? Why is there hurt? Right? Okay, well, if God gave, like, sickness and disease, like, where did it come from? Because God is love. God God speaks healing. God speaks freedom. Chains broken. He's not going to give you this pain and hurt and sickness and be like, now come to me. I have the cure. Like, that's that's not... That's not how that works. We open doors and allow the devil in. And then the devil tries to plant those seeds of saying, you're sick, you're twisted, you're broken, you're unlovable, you're unforgivable, you're all these things. And it takes time to go through and dig up those those plants and seeds and overgrown weeds that have, have been taken people over because the, that's what we believe, right? So now we go through and we, we start one at a time, we start bringing it up and we start replanting with a different seed. And that different seed is, is God's word of, nope, I am healed. I am free. I am loved. I am worthy. And that's what we start believing. And so we start manifesting. We start digging up the old and going through those lies. And, and the Lord's like, no, this is what the devil says. This is what I say. So you pull out that that root of that weed and then you, you replant a new seed. And then you water it and you trust and you, you let it grow and manifest into better, into healing, into believing. And Oh, it's possible. It takes time. Everything takes time, right? You break a bone, it takes time to heal. It takes time to to rid your mind and heart and soul of all the things that this world has told you for so long and all the lies of the devil. But starting right here and right now and restarting is possible. It just starts with now. And then we start manifesting that. We start speaking life over our future. We have new that we're coming into, we're ridding ourselves of the past, of the lies, of the, the things that we were, we believed in, and we're replanting, and we're believing for new, and believing for healing, and, and we're manifesting new, and all of this, right? It takes time. We're digging out the lies, digging out the roots, the weeds, everything, and we're planting God's, God's word, and God's truth into our lives, right? This is the importance of reading these verses. These are new seeds we're planting, God is watering them and speaking them every day is watering them. Speaking them every day is believing and receiving and declaring and knowing and trusting. And then we're speaking that out. And that's what we're manifesting for our future. It takes time to undo what has been done, but it's not impossible. Chains can be broken. Things can be healed. Hearts can be healed. Minds, hearts, souls, everything. I mean, he says in here, right? But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 30, 17. And why do people not want to believe the Bible? You just want to live miserable the rest of your life? Like, this is proof. And this is something you're going to speak every day and believe and root. And so when it comes up, we have something to go, no, but God says, I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. Isaiah 41.10, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I mean, come on. Doesn't that sound amazing? And it's not just it sounds good. It is good. You will see it. It's not it's not just a lie. It's not just a billboard, an advertisement. It's not just something that they're trying to trick you into buying for this season. And it's not something next year they're going to have to come up with a better slogan. This is all day, every day, all year round from how many years ago? 
Proof is in the pudding. Proof is in the Bible. Read the Bible. It's amazing. Read these verses. Psalms 85 8. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people his saints but let them not return to folly right so we start believing what he says about us so that we no longer feel the urge to go out and get um confirmation and affirmation through other people you know god's like nope you're loved i love you i don't make junk and then it's like oh i guess i don't need someone else's validation i don't need to use my body for sex so that someone proves they love me i love myself so if you can't respect me and not having sex then I don't know. Then maybe you, you know, maybe, you know, I can show you a couple verses or talk to you about how loved you are so that you also don't need to have sex or drink or do drugs or whatever the case may be to feel or to not feel. So, yeah, pretty good Bible study this morning. That totally took off on a different rant. I just, yeah, so many good verses. If anybody's curious, I've got like several pages of verses and healing and peace and rest so if anybody is run ragged stressed out confused torn just not in a good place mentally emotionally physically whatever i can get you a picture of this stuff sent over and uh, kind of go through you know how i stopped a train going 2,000 miles an hour and i <laughs> got to where i'm at right now so I love you guys. Be blessed. Have a great day. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, let me know if there's anything you have questions on.